Dear chess friends, uh, this is Stepan Zielka and in this video I will show you the final stage of mating with rook and bishop against rook. Uh, this endgame is generally draw uh, when uh, white to move for example uh, decided to go for this blunder, bishop c6, uh, thinking that he's, he has an uh, un uh, undefendable mate. Uh, Black would just go rook d7, which is a very important uh, resource for this uh, endgame. And after bishop takes c6, uh, bishop takes d7, it's stalemate. Uh, so basically, this uh, rook and this endgame is pretty hard to defend, but it's generally draw everywhere, uh, expect the, uh, except of these positions. Uh, they can be shifted uh, to this file, to these files. No, to these files uh, when you just shift the position uh, with king and bishop uh, to the green square so you will always be winning uh, with white to move uh, but uh, to this uh, if you shift it to b6 and b5 against king on b8 that's the only uh, file where actually it's not winning this setup uh, the other setups are just winning and I will show you the central one called Philidor position and it's not very hard but okay it's uh, it's not very hard once you know how to play it but when you have no idea um, you do not know the pattern it's uh, by far not easy to come up uh, with a few minutes on your clock so it's good to know uh, the, the important motives and then you will build it on the board easily. So you start with a uh, rook f8 check, simply uh, avoiding all these tricks with uh, rook d7. After rook e8, rook f7, rook e2. Uh, okay, if if he goes rook e1, you go immediately. If rook e1 happened, you go immediately rook b7. Now you go rook g7. Uh, with this green marking I wanted to tell uh, that this is the best, by far the best uh, square for the rook uh, because it doesn't matter, it's on a light square because there will never be check uh, winning the rook so it's fine to be on light square uh, what's important that uh, this uh, d2 check is on dark square which means it's, undef it's uh, impossible to defend uh, with the light square bishop so uh, the point of rook g7 is simply to force black to move another move uh, so rook e1 will happen and now you already start to have these tricks uh, with just bishop moving somewhere and protecting uh, at the same time the d1 square so this is the point of rook g7 move it's not obvious uh, without knowing this uh, but uh, the bishop will sta start trying some tricks from b3 and that's the reason why you prefer the rook on e1 because then you just protect the checking square <coughs> now you go to the shorter side uh, and uh, again you are threatening may and rook c1 should happen uh, if king c8 happens it's very fast uh, and uh, for black you go rook a7 now may is threatening rook b1 only defense rook h7 check and winning the rook so this is uh, just forced uh, this is just forced this rook c1 just king c8 immediately loses a rook uh, in the variation i showed i showed uh, just a while ago so uh, now you go bishop b3 and you see that you are either pr you're protecting both these important checking square on d1 and you are also import, uh, uh, protecting very important uh, c2 uh, with this d2 checks options so now basically black has uh, the best move rook c3 but it's the very bad line for the rook we, used, we started with rook e1 when we had to, had to leave we went to e1 and now after rook c3 the rook will already be on the worst line possible uh, let's check uh, the second option for black king c8 now you go rook b4 and it will be very very fast because now bishop e6 e6 check is threatening so king d8 is the only move rook f4 threatening again mate now after king e8 you would just go bishop a4 mate uh, 
uh, so uh, after after rook e1 uh, you just go bishop a4 and you already see that this bishop is now protecting uh, both the important squares and after king c rook b4 and bishop d7 inevitably coming with rook b8 there's a more more ways how to uh, fi how to, how to finish black also bishop c6 would uh, certainly uh, be enough but uh, uh, here in this position after bishop b3 uh, this rook c3 is necessary so this uh, i just wanted to show you why king c8 is not very good uh, as so rook c3 and now you win a tempo with bishop e6 threatening immediate mate so the check is necessary bishop d5 rook c3 back and now what we basically uh, achieved with this bishop b3 maneuver uh, is uh, that the rook is not here is not here but it's here on the bad square on the bad rank uh, so this was the only uh, only reason uh, behind the operation and now when the uh, rook is already on the bad third rank we will just finish black this way checking okay what is this okay check check is fine but i do not have this line okay king c8 uh this is the basic motive this is the basic motive that you just go uh, with these two checks you force the king to the light square and once uh, once in this position uh, king d8 is met by bishop c4 which is the point why you wanted the rook on c3 because here it would be check here it would be check but here it's no check <coughs> so bishop c4 king c8 and now you are mating Okay, so in if in these positions, uh, king uh, rook d3 happens. Instead, you just go rook h4, king b8, rook a4, and this is another very important motive that once the there there is a diagonal uh, between this attacking and defending king, you have just this uh, idea of rook a4 with inevitable mate on a8. <coughs> uh, so with this rook. Uh, d7 check uh, if opponent went to uh, e1 e, uh, to e8 uh, it would be it would be the same like here and bishop e4 and again protecting this uh, important check on d3 uh, just threatening mate on f8 and after king e8 check you just uh, finish black once again so uh, this is the Philidor position the final uh, final position which you want to uh, achieve with the attacking side and the one that you want to uh, to avoid at all cost uh, as a defense uh, so this is everything to the video thank you for watching and see you in next part of the series